Next, we have Elodie Levesque. She is a senior conservator in Trinity College Dublin and a member of the Beast to Craft project in, at the University of Copenhagen. She previously worked at the Institut de Recherche et d'Histoire des Textes in Paris as a research engineer. Prior to this, Elodie was a manuscript conservator at Montpellier University Library. For the past six years, her main fo focus has been on medieval bindings from the Clairvaux collection of manuscripts. She also worked for the National Library of Ireland from 2010 to 2016, conserving the library's manuscript collections, including the Gaelic and the Ormond Deeds collections. She is the author of numerous, numerous publications about manuscript conservation in international peer-reviewed scientific journals, such as the Journal of Paper Conservation. In addition, she is part of the Seminar Advisory Board for Care and Conservation of Manuscripts at the University of Copenhagen. She's a member of the International Council of Museums and the International Association of Paper Conservators, Yada. She graduated from the Sorbonne in Paris in 2010. Please. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to speak on behalf of uh, myself, of course. Sorry, Elodie. There you All go. right, did you hear me? Yeah, do you have to start again? Okay, I'll start again. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm going to speak on behalf of uh, myself, Cédric Lelièvre and Claire Chain, who I can see actually uh, here. So she might be able to answer questions at the end if there's anything you want to know. Um, we have chosen to write a paper about a, an historical material that Chris Clarkson had started to investigate during his career and that we found very useful for conservation treatments. It all started from our observations of some medieval bindings in the Clairvaux collection, as well as manuscripts from other libraries in France. Some of the bindings are covered with an intriguing, intriguing type of leather, which uh, in appearance is close to, to parchment. In the 12th and 13th century in Clairvaux, the bindings had uh, two covers, the primary cover made of toad skin and a chemise. Although the primary cover was hidden under the chemise, it was made of a stain-free and defect-free uh, bright white skin. In many cases, this skin raises questions um, about its nature, which is very difficult to identify. In fact, in his catalogue of the Clairvaux manuscripts, André Vernet described certain covers as being made of a thin white skin with a very tight grain, which is in some volumes resembles parchment. The selected skins would have been perfectly suited uh, to the manufacture of a high quality parchment intended for writing. Under the microscope, the grain of the follicles and their arrangement are barely perceptible. This is often the case with parchments in which um, pores are frequently blocked by chalk and successive mechanical treatment during preparation of the writing surface. Although large in size, the Clairvaux skins are extremely thin and rarely exceed 0.35 millimeter. Most of these skins are still in an excellent state of preservation and um, have retained their flexibility despite um, their parchment-like appearance. These skins share common characteristics with leather and parchment. So this made us think that Clairvaux almost certainly used parchment to produce its skin. Unlike leather, parchment is not tanned. After the dehairing bath, the skin is stretched in a frame uh, until completely dry and remains so during all the work of preparing the surface. This operation transformed the three-dimensional structure of the fibrous network of the dermis into a lamellar uh, structure. Fibers become sort of frozen in the structure of the skin when the parchment is dry, making it semi-rigid. However, if the parchment is rehydrated, the fibers separate and regain some flexibility. This means that the alignment of the fibers is somehow reversible, which means that it is entirely possible to make toad leather from parchment. Some recipes from the 14th and 15th century describe the making of toad skins from parchment. They recommend placing the leather in a beer dregs uh, or with um, bran, fermentable ingredients that swell the skin and facilitate the separation of the fibers. 
Then a treatment with alum and egg yolk, and sometimes even flour, in other words, uh, towing, is applied. It is possible that this type of skin was produced in Clairvaux. We therefore tried to reproduce these recipes. Christopher Clarkson had attempted the production of these material following the Florence floods in uh, 1967. His recipe consists of dipping the parchment into a bath of water with acetic acid and salt at pH 4.5 for two to three days. Then he would soak the skin in a mixture of synthetic egg and alum for three to four days. The skin was dried on a glass plate under slight tension. What resulted by following Clarkson's recipe wasn't satisfactory to us. In fact, we obtained a rigid, rigid skin, much more rigid than our original Romanesque toad skins. We therefore continued the tests following the medieval recipes, aiming, aiming for a skin that would look the same, but would be more flexible. Adding flour and reducing the proportions of alum and salt quickly gave us hope as we finally obtained a softer and more opaque material. We then varied the proportion of the different ingredients and the way to rehydrate the skin before towing and also the way to dry the samples after the alum bath. The recipe which has given the best results so far is as follows. Use and split parchment made from skin that has never been treated with formaldehyde. Hydrate the parchment with water for about a day or a night. Lower the pH of the bath to around 4.5 by adding acidic acid. Stir the parchment from time to time. Dissolve the, the alum salt in hot water and let it cool down. Add some fat, four full eggs mixed with uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. Then add the flour to achieve a texture close to liquid pancake batter. In this bath, the skins are regularly um, knitted, and knitted and worked for one or two days. When the ingredients have penetrated the skin, the appearance changes dress, uh, rapidly. And at certain points, it stops changing completely. Uh, the skin is ready. The pH of this mixture is appro approximately 3.5 to 4, as um, acidity is necessary for the towing process and then air dry the skin. For our first experiments, our concern was to work on the skin as it dries, but we obtained a material that was too rigid as well, like Chris. Eventually, we understood that it is absolutely essential to let the skin mature for several weeks before we are rehydrating it and working it mechanically on a skate blade or something equivalent. Maturation is also important for the aluminium to polymerize and fix semi-permanently to the skin. We will now see um, how this material can be useful for conservators. The interesting aspect of this toad parchment are a very thin skin that retains as much of its initial material as possible. A skin that is flexible but not stretchy. A material which can be pared down if necessary in certain areas. A material which can be adhered or sewn uh, to other surfaces. And finally, a flexible material which uh, in appearance is close to parchment. So here is an example of a toad skin cover infill. Here is a new spine covering on a parchment binding using um, the so toad parchment. Here is the reinforcement of, a broken, of broken sewing supports. Our material is stronger and thinner than the a traditional alum toad skin. Here, uh, in this case, you can see that, the use, um, that we use the skin as um, reversible structural consolidation of a sewing. All the original elements could be kept. The balls reattached with the use of very little adhesive. This is a new binding. Once adhered to the boards, the skin gets a parchment-like visual aspect again, but it stays flexible where needed in the joints, for example. So this is very handy. So far, we haven't reached full knowledge of how the material is likely to perform in the future. 
But looking at the historical material which is it resembles, we remain absolutely confident. The next step forward will be to consider artificial aging in order to measure the material properties in comparison with manufactured Allen field stains as supplied by our um, usual suppliers. We are, of course, only considering the use of this material on original books with caution. Although most of the skins and leather available on the market nowadays are of varying qualities anyway. While still hoping for some positive results in terms of aging properties, the use of alum to parchment has been quite promising as it has allowed the use of non-adhesive repairs that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. So we're really grateful uh, to Christopher Clarkson for thinking of developing this material and teaching us the foundations of what became this exciting research project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elodie. Very interesting. But I had a question for Elodie and uh, Cedric and um, Claire. I, I mean, a quick question, but I was wondering, so because you were mentioning the adhesive used to um, adhere the, the taut parchment to parchment, what is the, that there was some difficulty with um, getting it to adhere? What kind of adhesive have you is, used? Is Cedric, I don't know if, he's, if Cedric is here. It he might be, anyway, I don't know if he's here, but... Um, I don't see him. He said he was, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, I think it's the opposite, actually. The, the, the alum uh, toad parchment is very easy to adhere with most adhesives, so I've used paste. I think oh, Cedric... Yeah, no, it's, it's actually the opposite. It's really, really easy. And you can sew it as well. It's, it's easy to sew and very strong anyway. So, no, that's, that's one of the good uh, points is, is it's easier than lots of materials. Sounds very interesting. Thank you. So I think if there are no more questions, and I don't know if the panelists, any of the panelists have questions, I mean, there's a one that just popped up, um, Rhea, to Elodie. Yeah, yeah sure. there is a new question, Rhea. Ah, uh, here. True. Is that from JD Sargon? It would make sense to me, Yerji. No, I don't, there's I don't see. There's one for Elodie. Ah, uh, here, Elodie, are you all aware of how wide the geographic distribution of Todd parchment might have been? I recall treating a couple of early printed books a few years ago that were covered in a similar thin Todd esque material. I'm wondering if it was taught parchment. Um, I don't I don't know, but we we all wondered actually. Uh, Cedric wondered as well. He saw it in different places in France, but we haven't tried to do any survey of them, but I'm I'm glad I'm glad um, other people can see it as well. I, I wouldn't think it's I mean it's it's in the recipes in the Middle Ages, so I would think that it's been used in Italy and in England as well as France, because the, the other recipes are English and Italian, the ones I've um, actually Claire found. Mm -hmm. um, so I but I don't know. I don't know. It's a very good question. We've definitely seen it in a few places in France. I've seen it in, in Clairvaux, but Cedric saw it in Orléans and other places. So that's that would be interesting to I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing photos of those um, other um, manuscripts, actually, if you have any. Thank you. Can I just react to this another uh, question uh, or comment? Uh, uh, I, the interesting point is that the other two codexes, they are not four, they are three only, are made on vellum on calf parchment. So that also shows that it was specifically made for Italy. That's all, thank you. Um, can I just pose a question? I'm not sure how to do it online or just a sure, comment. Go ahead. No, to, no, go to, ahead. This is actually a comment to Elodie. Um, so I'm not sure if you were aware, but um, Tony Keynes um, also tried to make Todd Parchment. Um, this was uh, before I was there as an intern um, uh, uh, from 1982 to 84, but before me was um, a conservator who's now retired from the Library of Congress, and um, she um, uh, she worked with Tony to actually make some Alan Todd parchment, and they used it 
um, on a, um, um, a TCD manuscript. I'm trying to remember the name of the manuscript, but I'll, I'll send you an email about it. But you might want to um, get in touch with um, um, some of the folks there um, to see if there's any records in the file. Absolutely. I think John is listening and Cluda as well. So <laughs> yeah, thank you for this. Thank yeah, you. yeah, it was a Romanesque manuscript. Um, and I, I actually saw examples of the material that they made. Um, so um, anyway, it might be right. interesting thank to compare. You. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. have a look. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. I, uh, I see there is another question. I don't know what it is. Uh, the, uh, well, actually, it, I'm seeing in the chat here that it's um, for uh, GD. But following up on Abigail, um, Melissa uh, Morton is saying that Jesse Meyer is also experimenting making Todd Parchment. Oh, okay. And Good. Uh, I, was, I was hoping he would. <laughs> we had a chat uh, a few months ago about this, so I'm glad, I'm glad to hear this. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the, the other skin. Uh, the Gavil, uh, that's, um, uh, that's a, a special type of uh, parchment made um, in Israel. Um, oh. uh, but I don't think it relates in the okay. same way. Um, yeah. All right. I had no, sorry, I had no idea about that. Yeah, it's pronounced Gavil. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 